So you understand what it is that we're teaching, right? Oh, definitely. What is it? Definitely. I feel like we come, we come from each other, and we've been oppressed from, uh, over a period of years. Exactly. Got stolen from us, man. Yeah. And they brainwashed us. Right. And then the next thing, yeah. brother, is that like one of the things that the officer asked you was about, do you see the oppression and how you, you or he asked you if you're mad about everything that you do. Ecclesiastes 7 and 7, right? Bring it and out! Are you mad at everything that you see going on with your people? So now, when we mad about it, what are we gonna do? What is there for you to do, brother? Now, I'm asking you, like, what is there for you to do for your people? Well, we gotta, we gotta link up more. We gotta link up together more. We gotta unite. We gotta unite under what? With too many individuals. Exactly, know? but we gotta unite under what? Each other. No, we gotta unite under the spirit of the Lord. That's we right. gotta unite under the Bible. That's right. Because today, today you see the BLM. Right? You see the Black uh, Life Matters movement. You see all sorts of politicians trying to come together under, you know, supposedly trying to pass laws for the black and Hispanics. But all that stuff never done nothing for our people because the spirit of the Lord wasn't involved with that. Now watch this, brother. Read it. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 7. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. So the Lord says oppression maketh a wise man mad. Okay? Mad meaning guess what else? It means that you go crazy, brother. You're tired of it. You see it and you're like, damn, I want to do something about it. Because a wise man being mad about something, right, losing his mind, guess what he'll do? He'll, he'll try to come up with solutions for the problem. For example, when we look at a man being in drugs, what would be the solution for that individual? Bring it out. What would be the solution that you as a wise man would give to that person? What would be the solution? Bring it out. Huh? No, not money. But right, but what answer will you give him? I would tell him he needs to find the Lord. He, exactly, you gotta find the Lord. Cause what the Lord say about that? You gotta read it. What you, see the thing is that we gotta learn what the Scripture says about that. When somebody is doing drugs, what is the Lord saying about it? What does the Lord have to say about it? That's the that's the devil's field when he's doing drugs. Right. Right? But you know what else? This is why we got to read the Bible. Because the solutions. Right. He brought out earlier Romans 15 and 4. Whatever was written a fourth time was written for a learning. Uh, then it says, uh, uh, through comfort of the scriptures, we might have hope. Meaning, right. the solutions for that brother in drugs is in the scriptures. The comfort of the scriptures, the Bible is going to give him that resolution that he needs to get over that. Watch. Finish Ecclesiastes, then go to 1 Corinthians. I'm just going to give you an example of what you got to do. Watch this. Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 7. Bring it out. Surely oppression maketh the wise man mad. And a gift destroyeth the heart. Then it says a gift destroys the heart. You know what that is? The heart is the mind. Right? Because a lot of times we think the heart is this organ that pumps blood. But this organ, that's all they do. The heart, according to the scripture, is the mind. So the Lord said a gift destroys the mind. When you look at the black and Hispanics, have we not been, give, been given things in society that has jacked us up? Bring it out. Have we not been given things like the government? Do they give things to us? What do they give to us? They give us drugs. Okay, they give us drugs. What else? Weapons. Okay, what else? Uh, oh, remember, it said a gift. Yep. A gift. What are things that they give us that for us, they seem like, oh, man, they're really trying to help us. They're giving us things. Yeah. There you go. Uh-huh. Child support. Uh-huh. Uh, the stimulus check. Yeah, it's a little stimulus Wait. check. You know, you know what's the other one? All those you are correct. You know what's one that has jacked up the black and Hispanic community lately? Is when they've given that extra money on, uh, when you're, what's that thing? Unemployment. I'll, you see that, right? Now, as that date approaches, seven and a half million people could lose aid, according to the Century Foundation. And what these programs do, one gives unemployed workers a $300 weekly boost. Another makes workers like gig workers or contractors, people who are typically ineligible for aid, eligible to receive these benefits. And then finally, the other one adds extra weeks of benefits after workers have exhausted their state aid. What's been going on with unemployment? Bring it out. Everybody getting unemployed. Right. Everybody, everybody and their mama getting And they ain't trying to do what? They ain't trying to work. They ain't trying to work. The $300 per week, of course, has been very controversial throughout the pandemic. We have seen about half of the states end those benefits early, arguing that they discourage people from trying to go back to work. You know what the Bible says about a man working? If you don't work, you don't eat. 
Damn, you know that. All praises. That's right. The Lord says if you don't work, you don't eat. But guess what they do? They do that, brother, because they know what the hell they're doing. Right. We're the main ones that need that $1,000 stimulus check, that extra $400. On. We're the ones that need it. Right. Is our uh, effort to put new tools in place to help states that choose to further extend pandemic unemployment benefits because of those needs, because uh, they're states like those you have mentioned, or because they have higher rates of unemployment among African Americans or other groups that need additional assistance. So now we now they're giving it to them like, damn, the government's so good to us. White man, our white daddy, white president, he's good to us. Bring it now up. we don't want to work. Now we're breaking the laws of God. Now we're not being an example to our children. Now you see how the scriptures are talking about that? That's the solution. When you give our people the Bible, you know what I'm saying? We got to give the people our Bible. <laughs> You know, these are things, brother, like, what he was bringing out is the fact that you, brother, you got to find a solution. I see you got a line right there. What was that? You know the line represents Judah, tribe of Judah? That's what it represents. It represents Christ. That's what that represents. Although that line, that tattoo is evil. Right. You ain't supposed to have no tattoos. I didn't know, and the reason why I don't know still is because I haven't read it. I'm a, you haven't I mean, read the Bible? I haven't read it like that. But, like, I mean, of course I've been, of course, studying the Bible. Or let me, I ain't picked up the Bible. Let me give you something. The I Lord says that. Before you head out, the Bible has always been used against our people. Always. The Bible was written for our people, but it was used against our people. Remember, during slavery, they, they we didn't read. What's that? These letters spell out my name. Missy Ann showed me when we used to play school. And she showed me about reading and, and writing. That's a kizzy. K-I-Z-Z-Y. Oh! Don't you never do nothing like that again. No reading, no writing. Never ever, you hear me? White folks know a nigga can read and write. They see to it that nigga be worse than whipped. That nigga be sold. <laughs> yes, sir. The white man, they took the Bible and used it against us. They didn't write the Bible. The Bible was written by the Lord through the disciples, through the prophets, right. through men that he appointed. It but it literally is our record, our history. You got Romans it. chapter 1, verse 2. Bring it out. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. So the invisible things from the creation of the world is from him, who God. It says that they are seen. Like you, how you say, you say you didn't believe in the Bible so much, but guess what? You know there's a God. Why? Because you exist, I exist. We didn't come from monkeys. Bring it we didn't up. Come from, they still here. We didn't come from monkeys. Exa we, still here. Exactly. What else is seen? Everything that we see, there's more in there, right? There's more in it. Everything, like everything in the world that we see right here, it must have been a, a, a inspiration of God. There must have been a heavenly, a heavenly creation that did this. Read on. Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Meaning, guess what? When we say, guess what? We don't believe in God, or we say we don't believe in the Bible. Guess what? There's no excuse for us, because we, we see it every day. When our people are being murdered in the streets, guess what? It's in the Bible that our people is going to be put down in the streets. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28 and 15, right quick. 16. Read verse 16. Because what our people go through every day in their communities, it was prophesied in the scriptures. When, when you see our people in the, in the cities, right, are we cursed or blessed? Are we cursed or blessed in our communities? What, are we, we cursed through what? What do our people go through in the community? Bring it out. Uh -huh. Okay, watch this. Watch this. Read it. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Read it out. Cursed shall thou be in the city. Uh -huh. And cursed shall thou be in the field. See what the Lord said? The Lord said we're going to be cursed in the city. 
and curse in the field. Right. When you look at us, the biggest thing that we go through, like right here, you see a lot of, a lot of homelessness. Why? Through drugs, through alcoholism, lack of work, not knowing a man how to be a man, the woman not knowing her place in society. Bring it out! These are all things that, guess what? These are, these are curses in the city. Right. So the things that are evident around us, the homelessness, are people being in drugs, we see it. That's evidence of God existing. Because God said we would be going through those things. Right. And then he says, curse in the field. You've heard that before, sister? You know what the field is? It started right here. You see the plantation? Cotton fields. Okay, banana fields, banana plantations. Copper, like the Hispanics, they were mining, they, the sugar, uh, sugar uh, cane field, the Hispanics, they were mining uh, uh, in the caves down in South and Central America for gold, for copper, for brass. These are all things that we went through. Right. Yes, you know what those plantation fields are today. Your work, your job, the job fields. You still got Hispanics working in, up in uh, Bakersfield in the, in, 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 the, in the fields. Right. You still got them working up there. Every job that you go for, nine to five, guess what? We weren't supposed to work like that. The world, planet Earth was given for the black and Hispanic man to rule. Right. We were supposed to govern the whole planet Earth. We are kings, we gods, but guess what? God said because we didn't keep his laws, we fell from that power. Now we are cursing the cities and cursing the fields. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.